if you try and use the Russian lip technique on someone who's got le- very, very thin lips, you're going to be disappointed. There just isn't the room to create that with that technique. Welcome to the Assessed Mastery Show. I'm Dr. Tim Pierce. Hi, I'm Miranda Pierce. And today we're talking about lip design. How do you get a great one? How do you build treatments around your patient's needs, their anatomy? How do you choose the right technique? We're going to talk about all that today. So why do we, because obviously everyone is desperate to learn how to do the perfect lips and it really is like the hero treatment of our industry. But why do we need to talk about design? Why can't you just tell us which technique to do? Yeah, so this is actually how I think many experts present the right way to do lips um, and many clinicians gravitate towards their way of doing lips. And actually what I want to advocate for is a more sophisticated kind of mix of, tr- of treatment designs that you use according to the specific patient in front of you. So that's that's the, the point of this show is to show you how to not just have one technique, but how to choose the best of aspects of all the techniques for specific patients. That's really the ideal treatment. So what do you actually mean by lip design? So lip design is the process by which you choose where to place filler in the lip, obviously, or whether even not to do it at all, that might be part of it. But you're, on what basis are you choosing the way that you place that product? And that's really where it gets interesting because we actually should be designing treatments around and all sorts of factors. Like one thing is for sure is there isn't one technique that's going to solve all your problems or your patient's problems. So really it gets really complex and sophisticated when you're trying to match out the, the best the, the best rationale for each technique with the specific patient that you've got matching it to their hopes and dreams, matching it to what they're afraid of, to their medical history. All of that needs to come together in one final output. That's essentially what a great lip design is. It's it's piecing together all the aspects, relating it to product, technique, and the patients and the patient themselves so that you design something around each individual patient. So what are the stages? Where do we begin? So the first stage of any of any treatment design, but for lip design specifically, would be around establishing what the patient's actually after. So um, now, I think what happens is a lot of clinicians make a huge number of assumptions, which are often correct, but they miss out on the real value of establishing and getting that said out loud in the consultation. So what do you want to look like afterwards? Really draw that out of them. And a good example of this is when patients bring photographs. Many clinicians, that's a heart sink moment. They don't really want to have to try and achieve a, a photograph. Now, I've worked out years ago, it's a really bad move to be negative in that situation. What you need to do is because is, is what they're trying to do is communicate a really complicated idea. Like if you're trying to communicate an aesthetic into words, it's challenging. Like we all lack the words like curvature, volume, detail, color, contrast, definition, projection. All these things are quite hard. These are, This is industry jargon. The patient doesn't know all the jargon. They try and show you a picture. They're trying to show you what they want. A good clinician will pull from that image an interpretation of what they're trying to say and trying to, fa- trying to match that to their face. And that's obviously the main thing most patients come with, which is they try and give you an idea of what they want aesthetically. But there are two other aspects of this that I'd like people to start to dig for and find out, which is they want that aesthetic result because they want to create a feeling in themselves. And that feeling might simply be confidence. It might be like, I now feel like I can take more social risks. I can meet new people I wouldn't have met. So they're they're building on, they're trying to create a feeling, which sometimes getting rid of a negative. I feel insecure about this. I don't want to smile. Or it can be creating a positive. I want to feel more confident. I want to feel like the prettiest girl in the room. Whatever it is, it doesn't really matter. But it's a feeling they're after. And underneath that, I suspect, and this is the hardest thing to get to, but it's nearly always there, is there's some practical reason why this is going to make a difference in their life. And if you get to that level, you really understand your patient. What I mean by that is if I have my lips sorted, I will feel confident enough to, you know, to be more flirtatious if I'm, if I'm looking for a boyfriend, or it might be to apply for a job that I that I want to feel on the front foot for. It could be all sorts of things. Um, but if you can get to the social impact that they're actually after, often they haven't thought about this themselves, but I believe it's an unconscious desire. If I feel this way, I will be able to behave differently in this situation, which will improve my life. That's the key. If you can get to that level, you really understand your patients. And then you can talk to them on a much better level when you're actually trying to design the treatment. And they will listen to you because they know it's about achieving their real goals, not just you selling them a middle of lip filler. So coming back, I find it really interesting what you said about if they come with a picture of like, you know, Angelina Jolie, you learned that it's not, it's good to not be negative about that. That's so true. Like if I, I feel vulnerable, if I go to the hairdresser with a, you know, a picture of someone's like Jennifer Anderson's hair or something and they're like, 
you ain't getting that love. You know, your hair is hideous. You know, it feels vulnerable. So what do you do instead? So you, you try and take, I acknowledge that aspect. And most patients are not stupid. They know they're not going to look like Angelina Jolie just because they show you a picture of Angelina Jolie, but they are communicating something. And that's the bit I acknowledge, which is obviously there's a difference in, in the foundation, but that doesn't mean I can't take from that what you're trying to explain to me. And sometimes I'll explain what I've just explained here, which is I understand it's difficult to put it into words. So it does help me to see what you're hoping for. And then I will pull aspects of that, of their lips, the person they're, and they're presenting, try and relate it to the lips in front of me and try and show the connection. Or if I do that, you'll be closer in this area. And if I do that, you'll be closer in that area. And obviously it won't be exactly the same, but I can take a flavor from it. Mm, okay, fine. So what's next in the stages? So next, so you've established the patient's goals. Um, the next thing is to establish the patient's fears. So um, what I always think with this is if you don't establish the fears, they come back and bite you later on. Like you've got to find out what your patient is scared of. Now, quite often, if you don't do this as part of a systematic process, they will keep going on about it. So classic thing that I learned uh, over the years is when they are still trying to do the consultation on the bed, like you've agreed the treatment plan and then you're lying down and they're still saying, and remember, I want this and don't do, you know, you haven't done your full consultation. You need to, they Either you've done it and they don't feel like you've heard it because you haven't acknowledged it enough or you just haven't done it at all. So listen to those moments. They're trying to usually trying to tell you what they're afraid of and get that out. You're afraid of looking like a duck. You're afraid of maybe not having enough volume. I've certainly had patients say, I'm afraid you won't do enough because I know you're all about the natural result. <laughs> so sometimes their fear is that you won't do it enough. So you, you need to figure out what is what they're afraid of, then you can talk about it and you can tweak your treatment plan. But if you just ignore those anxieties, um, you end up with an anxious patient leaving with doubts and that's mm. not good for anyone. Such a good point. Yeah, I, I felt that myself, you know, with, with other treatments. Okay, so you've got their fears out, you've tweaked their treatment plan accordingly. What's next? Stage three, which is the key really for most of us, is the, the actual analysis of the lips. So you actually need to make an official part of your consultation that I'm now analyzing your lips. Um, Many people don't. You go straight to injecting. And that, you know, that's okay. But if you want to do a top level consultation, there's a, there's an official moment where you start to analyze their lips. And that's when they start to understand that there's more to aesthetics than just big lips, because you can talk a lot about the detail. This is the kind of thing we cover in, in depth in Lip Masters, my online course. But um, but we'll cover the, the overall value, uh, the a top level view of it from here. That I just to say, I think if someone said to me, I'm going to analyze your lips, I'd be like, hmm, exciting. Like, you know, I think it's good to sort of, to note that you are of that level of expertise where there's a stage and you go through the process and it's got to be done. I think that's a yeah. really good value add. Now, some people don't feel that way. Some people feel on the back foot, they're like, oh no, now I'm going to be criticized. So one good tip to have before you start any facial analysis is start with a compliment, you know, and it should be real compliment. Don't make up stuff. But I always say, say something nice before you start with little things that can be improved. Okay, so tell us about the that process. Okay, so I want to I want to first of all acknowledge what they've told me. So if they've told me about their aesthetics goals, often they're onto something. Most patients have picked up a ratio without any training because this is actually built into our basically into our DNA. Like we know what healthy looks like, and most people beauty is healthy. It's the same thing essentially, um, until you're in the realm of fashion and culture. So it can turn into something else, but for most of us, there's a there's a reason they know they're going to be more beautiful and they've tried to articulate it. And at this point, I'll often justify what they've said. So if you've said, if they've said, I want more uh, lips, more like this celebrity, and I've noticed that celebrity has symmetrical lips and she has asymmetrical lips or a top lip bigger than the bottom or the other way around, I will then say, you're, what you're picking up is that the, the lip is a different ratio, which means if we increase the ratio, so you're moving closer to the picture that you showed me, you're actually moving closer to the scientific definition of beauty. And so even though we may not get 100% there, just moving closer is going to do that for you. So I'm trying to pick out from what they've said and bounce back the science so that they can feel it's justified. Okay. So I would, uh, that's, the, that's the simplest version of it. You just simply reflect because most people are right on some levels, not everyone. And then you can layer on the extra stuff that you learn. Now, there's all sorts of things you can pick up about how to describe this beauty. And it is a much longer chunk of work, but you know, your proportion, detail, even the contrast, the ratios, the curvatures, all of these things you should aim to over time articulate to patients depending on what they've got so that they get a conscious idea of what beauty is and they and you're the one who gave it to them. So you're you're immediately the expert now and it takes away this battle over how much for a mill um, when they can see that you're actually designing an aesthetically beautiful result based on something that's to do with training. Um, you're going to be far ahead of those who are just distributing filler. Amazing. I think that's really, really worth, that's worth a great deal.
Okay, so what's next after analysis? So after the analysis, you're then in the realm of choosing your technique. So this is the bit, and a lot of people have skipped everything up to that and they're just going straight for the technique. Really, your technique should be specifically built around everything we've just learned from our patients. So we're trying to assemble the ideal technique. And that means you've got to know lots of techniques. You have got to get them all. You, If someone comes in and asks for Russian lips, you need to know what the benefit of that technique is and how you can actually use it for specific cases to get a result. What I definitely should avoid is trying to use the same technique on everyone because it just doesn't work. And you'll find this out rapidly that, you know, if you try and use the Russian lip technique on someone who's got very, very thin lips, you're going to be disappointed. There just isn't the room to create that with that technique. So you need to build it up and do it a different way. But the expert is is seeing all the techniques like it's like a, a box full of tools and you're selecting the right tool for the job. And that also applies to the products that you use and the instruments that go on the end of your needle. So are you using a needle, a cannula, what size, what length of needle? All of that is building around avoiding the risks and maximizing the aesthetic goal, which is then going to maximize the social cycle, the psychosocial impact on your patient, which is really what this is all about. So first step is you need to know your techniques and what the benefits of them are. Now, I have a different experience to the next injector. If I talk to one of my colleagues who've been injecting for some length of time, they will have a different opinion on the pros and cons of each technique. And although I can give that, it's also important that you try these out yourself and get to know them. You've got to, you've got to make a decision and instinct because you're the one at the end of the day holding the needle. So know your technique and then start to understand how do each of these techniques have benefits for different problems, for definition, for, um, you know, for, uh, Eversion of a lip for projection of a lip for uh, volume, pure volume might be the thing for d- details that you can create for the angles that you might want to create. So once you understand how all those techniques work and you've got the complete history of the patient, you can pick a selection of techniques or components of different techniques and design that tre- treatment design with your patient. And literally, if, if when you're really good at this, you explain why each step is going to match them perfectly. And it's it's dazzling for patients. I almost think we shouldn't be putting this out it's so good. But <laughs> anyway, that's what you should do. So you've mentioned all the techniques, but that makes me think, oh my God, like I, maybe I don't know all the techniques. How can they learn them? Well, if you've got your foundation covered and you're insured to do lips, you can actually, and there's a special download you can get with this video, which is you can get my e-learning, which covers all the latest techniques, it's got Russian lip technique, dual product. It's got the four, mil- four millimeter technique and loads of others. And those are all included um, in my Lip Masters 3.0, which is a product that keeps getting updated. So you will get free up. That's why it's called 3.0, because it's keep, it keeps getting updated. So you can join that if you like. And there's a great Facebook group, which is super busy at the moment with people posting pictures of lips. So get the download and there's a special offer in there for anyone that's available until October. Uh, just to mention, because people always ask, can you the technique is in there as well, isn't it? That's in there. So what's next? We've got our um, our... You know, we thought about our technique. What about products? So products, you've really got to know your products. It's a little bit like the techniques, to be honest. Like you will get a different opinion on different products from different people. Um, what I've discovered is really listen to those opinions and then test it and get to know yourself. I don't think you can know a product based on what it looks like when the patient is in front of you because I think they all look pretty similar. I can't tell if I've used Voleft or Volbella on the day or Juvenile Ultra 3. Um, because it's there's swelling involved. So you immediately get it. Basically, the main thing you see is swelling. What you want to do is take the advice from people who've used products for years and try and figure out how they're using different products if you haven't got loads of experience. And then the best thing, of course, but this is one that takes time, is to get to know products over a period of time. I think a year of using um, one product as your primary lift filler will really set in stone what that how that product behaves because you're going to see them at follow-ups. And then you'll just establish, are they losing definition with that product that's different to a different product? So I have collated all of that in in various things I put out about what I believe about certain products, but I do recommend practitioners get to know products and then choose them accordingly. What I believe is the biggest variable is around volume versus definition. I think there's a tension where you can have a very a product that's very good at producing volume, but it tends to be less good at creating definition. And if you get something that's very good at creating definition, you might disappoint people who want volume. So I would try as a broad brushstroke to just understand your products in those two dimensions, and that will help you choose accordingly. Mm, super useful. And that does sort of suggest that the dual technique might be good. Yeah. But it's when more expensive. It. Yeah. You, do, you don't do it unless you never get to do that unless you're doing good consultation because it just sounds like you're in- increasing the price for no reason. But but for someone like me, I'm 39, I think. And I, I if I if I were to come and get my lips done for the first time now, I'd be really worried I'm going to get some gross duck lips. 
So if you consulted me well and found out that was a problem and then said, well, this is how we're going to do it, I think I would be willing to spend that extra money just to avoid that fate. Oh, plenty of people have got a way bigger budget than they think they've got when they understand the real dynamics going on. And not many people figure that out. They they just do what the first thing the patient asks. So this is where great consultation changes budget. So in summary from the show, we have four stages that you need to do to get the perfect treatment design. Stage one is hopes and fears for your patient. You've got to establish those to know what you're aiming for. Stage two then is to establish what the aesthetic problem is. And this is where you analyze their lips and try and make it conscious what the components of a beautiful lip actually look like. Stage three is doing is choosing which technique is most likely to achieve their hopes and avoid their fears. And this is where you need to know a range of techniques so that you can pick the best one. And then there's also the materials you need to use. So you need to be choosing the right product um, for the right type of lip and you're using the right instrument so that you're minimizing trauma and achieving those goals. Those are the keys for the perfect lip design. Once you're doing all of those and fleshing them out, making them richer, you will be an expert in your field. If you want a download of all of those components plus the discount code, all you need to do is look in the link at the bottom of this video and you can download that for free. And don't forget, please do like this video. I absolutely love seeing the likes coming in as the week goes through. And any comments or questions, then do let us know down below. We'll ask Tim to reply and subscribe to this channel as well. And then you will get, if you hit the bell, you'll get notification when we go live each week. Thank you for watching. Take care. See you next time.